Look at that, what a beautiful sunset. As you look to the west, as you look to the west, Saco is somewhere about, I don't know, 800? Uh, yeah, I don't think a thousand miles. I, I think more than 500. It's somewhere between 500 and 1,000. Let's just say Sanko's like 750 miles that way. Hi, Sanko. We miss you, Sanko. Anyways, it is what it is. Um, you gotta drink water. You gotta hydrate. I can't drink. Preferably filter water because they're trying to poison you. So, it's always exciting to try a new cigar. It's even more exciting to try a new brand. So this is a new brand to me and a new cigar. So it, it, it means a lot, uh, meaning I look even harder because why? There's so many brands and whenever a new cigar comes out, even from a brand I've had, and even more so when you're a new brand that I haven't had, why, why would I smoke this cigar? Now this was given to me as a gift from Anthony P. I appreciate that. But the question is, as try to put some knowledge on it and reviewing it uh, and comparing it to its competitors, whether comparing it to other boutique brands or let's just squash that, let's just compare it to other cigars with and without the price point. Now the price point is give or take $10 plus or minus a dollar, right? I see 10, 50, whatever, let's we'll just say it's 10. So that's a reasonable price point for what we call like a mid-tier cigar. Because mid-tier generally, you know, seven to 10, maybe 15. 15 you get to the higher mid-tier. You get into that luxury category. Now, as the Bible says, um, it's better to sit on the lower floor of the party and have the people in the upper room say, what are you doing down there? Come on up. <laughs> so it's better to be a higher end cigar at a mid-tier price than a mid-tier cigar at a luxury price. You get what I'm saying though? Um, it's better to be better than your price point than to be worse. And you say, well, how do you know? To its competitors. I just can't stress that enough. I just can't stress that enough. Um, so, as far as the quality on this cigar, very nice. As far as the wrapper grade, I have nothing bad to say about it. It's oily, it's thick, it has a sheen to it. Um, see that? So yeah, full pack, no dents. So enough about that, that's all I find it dandy. The band, it's an inexpensive, simple band, but it gets the point across. It says stolen throw on the side, and it has, um, you know, raven or crow uh, on top of a crown. Now it is what it is. Uh, you know, honestly, I'd rather have a company put more money into tobacco than very expensive bands. At the same time, you know, as time goes on and the brand grows, you know, and better bands can be gotten. But that to me is not a, an issue. I could care less. However, if you spend like fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on a cigar, it's like, well, at that point you're like, well, spruce it up. But you know, for a very reasonable price at ten dollars. Uh, I'd rather the cigar be ten dollars with this band than if they made it twelve fifty. Uh, but they put a really nicer band on it, so like, that, you know, you get what I'm trying to say. So I have no problem with the band. I think it's simple, it's basic, and uh, I can really care less. It's all about the tobacco. It's not all about the tobacco. It's all about the choice of the tobaccos, how they play with each other, and then how you construct it, and then how it burns, and then how that smoke is delivered and how it feels in your tongue and how your mind interprets it. That's what's important. It's real simple. <laughs> bam, bam. Wow, is this more than a single cap? No, I thought it was. Bam, bam. Okay. I'm excited. Anthony P. enjoyed it. But that's irrelevant to me. If somebody else loved the cigar, that's not good or bad to me. That's just their, their interpretation. I'm not going to let that um, 
blind my, my eyes here. Um, where they're also, if they told me they didn't like the cigar, I'm not going to let that go, all oh, that I can't like it either. Because we prove with cigars, one of the worst factors is humidity. When you go to a lounge, and if you bought a cigar at a lounge, you bought it today, chances are if that cigar was in that lounge more than a week, it was there for a month, six months, most cigars in, in, in your lounges are too moist. I can't stress that enough. And then you take it out right away, especially if it's a dark, heavy, heavily packed, thick tobacco, and you're puffing it, you're having burn issues, touch-ups, going out, bad draw because the leaves are so swollen with moisture. I can't stress enough, that is not the cigar manufacturer's fault. Um, and you could say, well, is it the humidor's fault? It's your fault. You're the end user. You have to be responsible, right? Uh, just like if you own a firearm, the company made it so it's safe to operate. It shouldn't just be exploding in your hand, but it's your responsibility when you touch it, okay? Of course, you know, issues with the SIG 320 just going off in people's pockets. Six of one, half of the other. You know, I have some thoughts on that. Point is this, though. Um, so when you buy a cigar, it's up to you to make sure it's ready. And if that lounge ejected too much humidity into it, too much moisture, you gotta, you gotta shit some of that out. Take it out of cellophane, even for a couple of hours. If you could, let it sit overnight on top of your humidor. Even better, put it in a dry box for a day or two. It's not gonna hurt it, and I promise you, you'll have better ignition, you'll have better draw, you'll have better combustion, which leads to more smoke, which leads to a more effortless way to deliver the smoke, which leads to more flavor. Soft, gentle heat, I can't stress that enough. Lighters are for losers, I can't stress that enough. Here we go, um, yeah. Now, initial impression, that's a good cigar. Initial impression, I can't say anything bad about that. Initial impression, long, sticky, sweet, slightly spicy finish. Very nice. Very chocolatey cigar, like milk chocolate. <clears throat> First cigar I had today, Lean Palette. That is very nice. Nothing bad to say. The cigar feels better than its price point. It's better to be there than to be worse in your price point. It's better to have a boss look at you and go, I can't afford to lose this son of a bitch, than to go, why do I hire this guy? Mexican San Andreas wrapper, allegedly aged 10 years. And I say allegedly because that's, you know, it's a bold statement. I see why not to believe someone when they say that. Um, we've seen companies in the past, though, and I'm not saying this company, uh, where they say, oh, it has 15 year tobacco. And it's like, well, a piece of the leaf is in the filler. And you're like, is it the whole, in this case, claiming the wrapper. You know, it would have to be the whole wrap. But, you know, if a company advertises as 10-year aged tobacco in the filler, you got to get into specifics. You're like, all the fillers? 
And you might be like, wow, all right. There's a leaf in the field of this. And you're like, oh, well, that's fine. But if a company like advertises the cigars that, it might be a little misleading. So this is not misleading. It's just, we're bringing up different topics that happen in the cigar community. I got nothing bad to say about the cigar. And you know, it's really easy for me to talk shit about cigars if they're not good. I'll tell you the full truth. I don't lie, and I don't lie for cigars. I like everything this cigar is doing. It's a comfortable cigar. At the same time, the whole profile is just unique enough to say this cigar stands out. It would be irreplaceable, meaning that I haven't had a cigar to have exactly the way this one feels. However, the notes I'm getting, these are classical notes, that, so it's not, a, it's not an exotic cigar. It's not like an Amazon basin, which is grown in the swamps of Brazil, and they had to find crocodiles to get it. Um, which you can taste that. Um, very milk chocolate. Like, like if you have like chocolate cupcakes covered in like hot melted chocolate, right? It's a layered like textured chocolate. It's, it's quite nice. It's probably going to give you diabetes. Holding the smoke, it was nice when I was doing this, but when I did this, I got more out of it. I can't stress that enough. Holding the smoke and making different facial expressions is gonna move that smoke around over your nasal cavity and etc. etc. And you're gonna see a difference. Uh, I don't lie. I uh, getting people to hold the smoke and take deeper puffs, um, soft, gentle heat, making sure your cigars aren't too moist, drilling them dry out. These factors are making people more aware because you're making you're, you're being, you know you're not just going you know, if you just puff and pass on a cigar you might as well go ahead and join we're holding that smoke baby that's where you get the true intent intents are for camping and prunes are for winners clear your calling out eat fresh fruit um i, I literally i can't say anything bad about the cigar i could say i like the cigar i could actually say i really like the cigar I could say you should go out and buy a box of this. I can't stress it enough. It's very affordable. Ten dollars. You're looking at probably two hundred for a box. Um, this cigar in this size right here, which would be Toro, um, it's actually an easy recommendation. The cigar is phenomenal. It's not going to be the best cigar you ever had. Well, it's not good that far, but it's a great cigar. When you factor in the price point. I'm not even gonna say, well, it's a great cigar for the money. You know, that always feels cheap. You know what I'm saying though? It's like if you were the lady of the evening. Was it good for you, baby? Well, in the hundred dollar category of the uh, ladies of the evening, you know, it, it was it was, you know, it's worth the money. Not worth not worth more than the money, but you know, I can't say I felt like I feel gypped, but you know, she's just sitting there like I already have a terrible enough life as it is. You could have just said you're happy. Anyways. This cigar is good just because it's good. And the money for a cigar, or for anything, is just what's in the way for you to get it. That's the way you look at money. Different from when you're earning it. You earn your money generally through time or through terrible things, but that's another topic, and I don't recommend that. But you generally earn your money through time, and then you generally buy things with money, right? And then some things just cost more money to get to what you want. That's all it is. It's a trade. How much of your life are you willing to trade for that money? And how much of your money, which is 
a trade for your life, are you willing to trade for an object? And I'm not against this concept because, or else why else would this guy make this cigar? He's just going to make it to give to you? How is he going to keep his lights on? How is he going to, you know, pay, you know, pay for you know, his food? And I'm not going to explain the reason why we have a monetary system. Which, uh, it's not that it's good or bad. The difference is, you know, um, well, greed and everything else is another issue. Although capitalism is the only option to have any kind of um, incentive to work. Now, anything else is done out of fear or people are going to be too lazy on the other side. So, it is what it is. Um, also, I really like this cigar. I like what it does. Indonesian binder, and it said it was, it said Nicaraguan fillers, but then one website said Nicaraguan and Indonesian fillers. I don't know which one's true, and it doesn't matter to me. So you're looking at Mexican San Andreas, Indonesian, and Nicaragua. It's all irrelevant. It's a good blend. And it's good construction. And it looks nice. And the cigar's better than the price point. So, what can I say? I like it. The strength right now is a medium plus. We're three quarters of an inch in. The cigar is moving rather slowly. So, hence it feels heavy for its size. Uh, it's using very thick tobacco. Nice full pack. Really nice amount of black pepper. Beautiful milk chocolate. That's that's the main note. That's quite nice. Just a little bit of earth, so it gives it some depth, but it's not crazy. We haven't got to any major wood notes, and we'll see as the cigar picks up. The finish is quite long and nice. Right there, picked up to medium full. So here, as we approach the one inch mark, the cigar I feel was at full potential. It was a nice start, really nice start. And now we're cooking with gas. Hanging around that medium to full is perfect around this kind of blend. If it goes even harder, well, God bless. If it stays here, no problem. Um, I don't think it's just gonna drop like a dud and become medium, because this seems to see a be a very good quality cigar. It's rich, it's hearty. What it's doing, it's doing very well. I feel like it's really well blended. The, and the notes it's pushing, is, it's, it, it's just a very delicious cigar. Um, so whoever designed this blend, they know what the hell they're doing. This is a good blend. This is a smart profile. And this is reusable. This is something I would smoke again. This is not just good, but like, who gives a shit? Um, there's a lot of that, and that's fine. This is quite good, and definitely reusable. You can reuse this any time, any time of the day, this would be good. It's strong enough, but it's sweet enough, but not overbearing. I, when I say I can't stress it enough that I have nothing bad to say about it, I mean that. So the sun has set, the moon is out, and uh, the ash is in. Perfect construction, perfect burn, perfect draw. So I can't say this cigar is of extreme quality. Um, so that's what it is. Now, I'm going to remove now this simple band. Hopefully it's easy to remove. And it is. Okay. That's what it is. So this cigar is very delicious. The cigar doesn't push past a gentle medium full. So it is three quarter strength, but it's, a, it's just barely getting there. So this is a comfortable medium to full. Really nice darkness, 
three quarters, 75%. I have nothing bad to say about it. Let's get rid of the ash. I mean, really perfect ash. It's time to go. Was it a what? So, where does this cigar stack up? As far as just a cigar, it, it's a 4.5 out of 5. Which, you know, that's a very good recommendation. Solid. It would be a very high, very good. But by old standards of good, very good, amazing, and godlike, it would be a high, very good. Just sub below amazing. So it's not an amazing cigar, but it's a very, very good cigar. Now you factor in the price point, which is always a factor, and it's doing much better than the price. So I'm not going to say it's the best mid-tier cigar price I've ever had, but it's far from the worst, and, and it's it gives you a lot for your money. So I, I feel like this is a this is a good brand. First time having this, I haven't had this other two cigars. I think there's a Habano and there's something else called Arms. The other one. I, can't, I, I don't know much about this brand, but I won't say anything bad about it. Um, I think this is a good, reliable cigar, a tasty cigar. I think it's a very delicious Mexican San Andreas cigar. I think that you're not going to waste your money on this cigar. Buying it, and I think buying a box. Whether you pay a full price of $200, get a better deal somehow, you're going to have a good time with this thing. You know, what's compared to classical cigars in that category? No, it's not as strong as a Padron 26 a Padron, which means it's definitely not as strong as the 64 Padron. So if you're looking for that raw Nicaraguan power, no, it's not there. But, but um, if you like cigars like the Milano V Maduro, which is less strong than the 64 26, very chocolatey, um, which I think that has a mix of San Andreas wrapper and Nicaraguan fillers. It, if you like the Milano Fumadoro and something, this is slightly cheaper than that. That's a cigar I can compare this to, um, and I'm not going to say it's I'm not going to say it's as good as the Milano Fumadoro. That is a gold standard, and that's high praise to hang out with that for a new boutique brand. So I'm gonna give this brand kudos where it deserves. Nothing bad to say about it. It's a good quality cigar, good construction. Um, the only thing they could improve, let's just say, is the band. But with it being a smaller boutique brand, um, I could care less about a big fancy band. And as time goes on, and this company becomes more successful, I'm sure we'll see that improve, but I can kill us. The cigar was great. The cigar was great now. It's not like you have to buy this and let it sit a year. Um, it was not edgy at all. Um, it didn't feel dirty at all either. It felt like a well-rounded, a well-sanded down blend where it's very smooth. Um, and it was rather delicious. Almost a dessert-like kind of cigar, so. If you're in that kind of mood of a comfortable three-quarter strength, just about, and three-quarter darkness with a nice long finish, a nice long sticky sweet finish, without being too spicy, though it has some black pepper spice, but that's not overdone. It's, a, it's just a really nice, delicious chocolate cake kind of cigar. Since last time we met, though, as I got into the cigar further, cedar did come in the mix as well. I don't know exactly what inch point, but we left it the first inch. And, I, I mean, I'm down here, not at the nub, but in the last third. So it had nice complexity. It did everything. It was just a really nice, 
Gentleman's Maduro here, uh, Mexican San Andreas. 4.5, solid rating. Um, and definitely box worthy. That's a good caveat to have. So I appreciate Anthony G sending this to, uh, this to me. Um, I appreciate his chance to review this cigar, but also the brand. And as a newer brand, I think this brand has been out for some time. Not that long, but maybe a few years, give or take. Um, but I never had this cigar. I never heard of this brand. But if you're watching this, now you have. It was really enjoyable, very delicious. And I think you get a lot for your money. So it is what it is, I wish you well.